Welcome back, everybody, to the Big Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Ron Avis, and with me on the couch to my left is the Prince of Pixels himself, Nick Wright. And today we're going to talk about the top 10 games from failed consoles, and by that I mean TurboGrafx-16 and 3DO. We're doing a top 10 list of games from systems that, you know, we we appreciate. We have a soft spot in our heart for, but probably weren't that good. (laughs) Probably weren't the best purchases we've made. Yeah, and uh, for me, I'm talking about the TurboGrafx-16, which was a uh, 16-bit console that came out. Uh, during a very crowded time in video games when like other companies were starting to try and put their hat in you know they'd seen what Nintendo what what uh, Sega was up to yeah and you know NEC was like well, why not us and uh, for the 3do yeah 3do I mean, that was around uh, 95 I think when that came out um, now was that like a 32-bit console I I want to say yes. It was CD based, um, but yeah, I, I think it was thirty two bit. Trip Hopkins, Trip, I think I'm saying it right. Tri- Trip Hopkins, yes, who was the uh, head of Electronic Arts and who really was kind of a, um, he he was one of those guys that were he was a visionary, but was probably also too too big for his bridges. Like his ambitions were a little too yeah. great. You know, he felt that. Um, there, there was like this partnership with Sega, with EA Sports, and also Nintendo. But you know, during that whole period where uh, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to get into a little bit of history that you wouldn't expect in a TurboGrafx-16 3DO conversation. But you remember like the whole like Tengen or Tengen controversy? Yeah. yeah. So like they were putting out their own games without Nintendo's uh, approval. Yeah, because there was like. Um... Tetris. There was like two versions of Tetris. There was the Ten Tengen Tengen version, and then then the Nintendo version. Mm-hmm. And so the Tengen version is like very rare. And, it is rare, yeah. and um, and there were other games too that they released, but they didn't look like the original. The but it was really based off the arcade version of Tetris. Oh, is that right? Yeah, because there was an arcade version before Nintendo was like. We have Tetris. Everything Tetris is us. Were they Russian also? They might Well, the, the developer was... Um, it originated from Russia. Yeah. And I don't really know the details between, you know, allowing whoever to use the game. But. Long story short, probably not going to happen. But, yeah, Nintendo was charging a lot of money for, you know... They were... In addition to... Um, limiting developers to how many titles they could produce a year they were also kind of like choking people a little bit too because you had to use their cartridges and uh part of the reason why tengen was going around the whole copywriting was they didn't oh, want to yeah, use them they, they had uh they they made their cartridges were different than the nintendo ones yeah. i forgot about that yeah yeah they, they had like a smoothness to them yeah Kind of reminded me like Atari. And they were black, weren't they? Yeah. Instead of gray. Yeah. They weren't gray. They looked totally different. And how that came about was they had reverse engineered the lockout chip for the NES. Hmm. That's how Nintendo got away with their cartridges. They had a lockout mechanism, so you had to use their cartridges to bypass the lockout. Well, they had reverse engineered uh, Tengen, that is, you know, and there was like the big lawsuit that a lot of people know about. And of course, Nintendo won, and then they had to take all those cartridges off the shelves. And then I think Tengen like became a regular publisher at that point. But around that same time, was Trip Hawkins was threatening Sega Genesis, like they had reverse engineered their hardware as well. So they were putting the screws to uh, you know whoever was in charge of Sega at the time, Tom something I forget his name. But Trip was like, well, you know, like I can do the same thing. Like we don't need you. We can do our own thing. And I think that's kind of what. Let, that was like the beginnings of the steps of to the 3do well i uh i think i started the last list so why don't you start this one so turbo graphic 16 what's your first pick yeah so the turbo graphic 16 i'm i'm gonna do all turbo games nick will do all 3do games because we didn't own the systems yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh so my number one 
uh, TurboGrafx 16 game was Bonk's Adventure. And Bonk, I, I love playing Bonk. Going to your house and playing Bonk's Adventure. I mean, that's a, I still like Bonk. That's a great little game. Everything about Bonk felt right. It was a very quality game. It was a it was the kind of game that would could propel a system to give them a chance. And I think Turbo lived, you know, as long as it did because Bonk was such a quality game. It was like their answer to Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, Hudson was like the ace in the hole for NEC. That was really all they had, and they had some ports, but not many. And so you know, they Hudson was like I think popular for like uh, Adventure Island or something yes. like that. So Bonk had that kind of artwork style to it, but it was like this like crazy little caveman <laughs> who uh, you know he would eat meat. Eat and, that meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And like headbang, you know, like he he beat people up with his head. It was yeah. very weird, yeah. strange little like I like the cartoon style of of, of the uh, the animations and things of the mm-hmm. game were really colorful and showed off like what I think was the best. Had of, huge bosses, huge bosses, yeah, two D bosses like hand drawn bosses, and it, it was what I feel like the best of what the Turbo Graphics was about was like those bright, colorful colors and you know creative games and uh and it, it did it rivaled mario in a whole lot of ways and there were several sequels to bonk mm-hmm. there was bonk's revenge which was just you know actually even better than bonk's adventure um mm-hmm. bonk's big adventure yeah there, yeah there was, there was bonk three and then there was even like some like little weird spin off air zonk air zonk yeah <laughs> And uh, even though I didn't play Air Zonk, and I don't even think I got Bonk Three, because I think by then, yeah, it kind of it it had petered out. Other things. I had admitted defeat. I'd waved the white flag yeah. with the uh, Turbo Graphics Sixteen. Like, did, I'm sorry, everyone else was right. Turbo Graphics is not the thing. Did you actually have Bonk Two? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I just had, remember playing Bonk One the most. Yeah, and Bonk Two was really fun, but you know, it's kind of like when we talked about Earthworm Jim. Yeah. You know, Earthworm Jim was great. Earthworm Jim 2 was, like, refined and more of what was good about the first one. But some about the first one was just the best. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it was a great game. And uh, it's the best, I think, TurboGrafx-16 game. And uh, it actually has been ported to other systems. Um, you can find yeah. Bonk yeah, on... you can get Bonk on Nintendo. You could get it on Nintendo and Game Boy. And there was a there was an arcade version even. I never saw that one. There's an arcade version of Bonk, and there's a version on Super Nintendo, Game Boy, like you said. Uh, yeah, so Bonk. Uh, Part of me wishes that like one of these companies that puts together these compilations of games, like uh, not necessarily compilations like Namco Museum, but like a fighting game, you know. Like, I wish somebody could... Yeah, have Bonk like a, as Bonk a guest in. appearance or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if Pac-Man can be in, you know, Smash Bros. Bonk would be awesome. Why not Bonk? He would, he would be. He was great. Like little pieces of meat fl- like bouncing around on the screen. You eat the meat. And he gets his little power up and he goes nuts. Uh, so yeah, Bonk. All, all the Bonk games, but specifically Bonk's Adventure. The first and probably only true, uh, like what do they call them? System sellers. Yeah. You bought that game because you you bought a Turbo Graphics because you wanted to play Bonk. Well, so uh, uh, I'm done with so, my speaking one. of system sellers. System sellers. So yeah, because uh, this was the absolute system seller for me for the 3DO, and I think I've mentioned this before, so it's like no secret when I right. say Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, the is definitive the reason I got the 3DO. Yeah, uh, but it, it was a great port of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. I mean. Because really, the, the thing that really stands out to me, too, about this port, I don't remember a single load time. Because it's a CD-based mm. game, you know. That's that's and noteworthy. It, yeah, it, it was, I think, a really great port of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And it was like the only way you could even get that game at the time. Yeah. It, I think next it came out like on the PC, mm-hmm. and which I also got, but... You know, I didn't have really a good enough computer to play it on. Now, did the 3DO have, like, the six buttons, like, layout, like the Saturn and, like, some of the other Um, systems of its time? No, it was a it was like a Genesis controller. It had the three buttons, and it had an L and an R button. Mm -hmm. And it had, like, kind of a little tiny start button. And so if you didn't have the special Capcom controller, which they did, they made a special... That was going to be my next question. Yeah, so you could have six buttons with the stock controller, 
by hitting like start and L and R for, you know, so you can get all six. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, there was like a special Capcom controller, which, um, I'll, I'll pull it out and I'll, I'll get a picture of that. <laughs> yeah, and, buddy. Uh, Can't, because it was Bit really Geeks cool. Facebook page plug right there. I, I really, they had this same controller like for Super Nintendo also. It, I liked it because it had like, it, it was, it had a grip. There was like a little handle, like a grip on it. And then it kind of the 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 rest kind of went out flat. Now wait, I remember like the one for Super Nintendo looked kind of shitty. Like it was like that ergonomic style. Well, you're talking about the joystick. Yeah, uh-huh. I didn't like that at all. Oh, okay, okay. Th- this was like a controller. Oh, an actual pad, like yeah, this, pad. Yeah, this was okay, a pad. Okay, okay. Yeah, it had like you know the little cross pad. Yeah. And, and just the six buttons like Street Fighter style. And I, you'll see the picture. It, I liked it. It was comfortable. It was weird looking, but it was comfortable. No, no. I think I remember it playing with it. You know, like it's your yeah. Because I had it on the Super Nintendo also, and I might have uh, you know taken it to like Eric's house. Or yeah, whatever, I, I, I do Fire. actually think I remember like because Capcom would make their own controllers like that. Yeah. Totally forgot about those. And yeah, they were excellent. They were exactly what you'd want them to be. Yeah. Um, because you know you could map your controller in a way where you. You know, I, when I played Street Fighter, it was all about fierce and jabs and, like, those kind of... Like, I never really did the medium kicks a whole, whole lot. Yeah. Unless it was required for, like, a Balrog character. Yeah, so, really, I mean, the the stock controller was doable. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was totally doable on the Super Nintendo, so yeah. totally doable on 3DO as well. But, uh, oh, and, you know, the neat thing, you know, we've talked about before about the consoles that were like the Dreamcast and the GameCube, you know, that would have like the four ports on the front for yeah. multiplayer. It's a neat thing about the 3DO was it had one port on the front. The controller, well, I take it, it might have had two ports. I forget, I'd have to look. But the controller had another port on it and you would daisy chain off of the controllers to have as many players as whatever the game would Wait. support. So, yeah. like, we would be tethered to each other? Yeah. So, like, you would plug player one into the console. Yeah. Player two would plug into player one's controller. Player three would plug into And that worked okay, because in my mind, that sounds totally, like, asinine it, and horrible. It, there was a, a, what was it called? The Sidewinder? There was mm-hmm. a PC uh, Windows controller that did the same I, thing. I think I had a Sidewinder. And uh, it, it, was, it, it was good. I cool. Mean, you know, in the age that you didn't have the wireless controllers like no, now, you're right. Just you know, boy, are we so spoiled nowadays? Yeah, because I mean, it freed up having to have all these ports, and so if you wanted to have an eight-player game, you know, I I, I don't remember uh, whatever 3DO game, you know, what the top that it would support. I I don't know. Well, they were thinking ahead, but yeah. It, so and you didn't need a turbo tap or some extra additional accessory. So in a way that yeah, that's that's very forward thinking. So that that was pretty cool of them. And you know what? You know a game that maybe they took advantage of that could be like a Madden game or something. Yeah. You know, cuz you know, you got 11 guys on each side, technically you could maybe have four on each team. Who knows? Um, but I'll have to research that. Like maybe Madden took advantage of that. I'd be interested mm-hmm. to find some like old pictures of like some people that took with like Eight people daisy chain. Yeah, I wonder what the max was. I don't know. Yeah. So okay, so number two for Turbo Graphics. Number two for Turbo Graphics sixteen, and we're still pretty strong. Uh, is Blazing Lasers. Now I don't know if I'm I'm not familiar with this one. Bla- okay, so the Turbo Graphics sixteen came with two games. No, did uh, it? Yeah, it came with two games when I got it. It came with Keith Courage, which was this yeah, awful crappy two D like like adventure type game. I remember Keith Courage. I think it was probably, you know, it came out before Bonk, so it was probably their attempt at like a mascot-y kind of game. Yeah. Who knows? And in fact, when I like watch old gameplay footage of it, it reminds me of like those like Wonder Boy type games. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the graphics were colorful and everything, but it, it, you know, it controlled like poop. So, you know, you, you get a system you don't know much about, like I did with Turbo Graphics. You're in you're in totally unfamiliar waters, no Mario, no licenses you're familiar with. So I put in Key Courage, very underwhelmed. Well it came with this other game called Blazing Lasers, which was one of those you know, shooting games, like like bullet hell oh, okay. type deals. Yeah. And um, I remember like just being so taken aback by how much fun that game was. <laughs> And it instantly hooked me. 
And that was the game that I played for a long, long time before like a game like Bonk had time to come along. And it turned out that even though I didn't realize it at the time, those types of games were huge in the 16-bit era. Um, there were lots of games. And like, it wasn't the first. It didn't pioneer. Like Games like R-Type were like the original versions yeah. of those games. Um, but the TurboGrafx-16 had quite a few of those types of games. Um, and Blazing Lasers was a top-notch game. In fact, if you get like ROMs, you know, like you get your emulators and stuff. Mm -hmm. I uh, was like, I wonder if Blazing Lasers is still fun. And damn, it's still fun. Yeah, it's it plays so well. It's perfect. You know, the 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 upgrading system and the weapons and the enemy, like the big bosses. Um, and I don't know if you were really into those style of games. I kind of got into There's them a, a few little bit. I played, but not a lot. I got into them a little bit because of Blazing Lasers. I liked it so much. And, uh, you know, man, a major shout-out to that game. Hmm. Um, and not a lot of people know about it, as you were yeah, like, what's Blazing Lasers? You um, know, and I'm sure I must have played it at your house, but I just not familiar I, with I'm sure game. I showed it off to yeah. you. Like, you know, like, here's Keith Courage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this game is actually a lot of fun. You know, I don't even remember Keith Courage that, that you had it. I didn't know it came with it. I just, it was such garbage. That I just I probably, remember going to your house and playing Bonk. Yeah, Bonk was that game where you're like, you got to come see Bonk. Yeah. You know, you're not going to invite your friends over to play Keith Courage. You're just not <laughs> going to do that to your friend. Um, not especially when you had like Sonic and Mario and all that other stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Blazing Lasers, it came with the system and it kind of was like the, the the beginning of like a lot of those really great, you know, bullet hell type games that they call where like the bullets are all over the screen and they're really hard and they drive you nuts but also very addictive so that's my number two nick for turbo graphics what's your number two for 3do well um coincidentally since your number two was the pack-in game my number two for 3do is the pack-in game which is gex so um gex i remember you know, gex gex i probably would have never really given it a second look had it have been you know a game on the shelf mm -hmm. but since it was the packing game you know okay you're gonna give it a shot and it was a fun little game i mean you know the controls were you know not perfect but um it, it was fun it was you know a little side scroller and it mascotty kind of like you were saying with the other game i remember he had a lot of personality I, like i remember like seeing like yeah. ads have been a tuxedo and well that's had... not this one though that's that, not this one no that's when they later on there were like x games on the playstation oh okay, okay. you were thinking of that probably but um but yeah they like they hired a but he did have a sense of humor a too. comedian to do like all the voice work uh, i forget his name now dana or something or other i think hmm. but uh and, and you know, often, it, which is kind of par for the course for such things, where there's like pre-recorded lines, you know, it, it repeats itself a lot. Yeah. But it, it it was it was a good little game. I liked it. I mean, I liked how he would crawl on walls. Yeah. And there was kind of a three-dimensional kind of you know, twisting of the worlds, if I remember correctly. Because I watched you play it a few times. Um. Uh... Maybe I'm thinking of another. You might be thinking of the other ones, um, but yeah, he did crawl on the wall. Like you could, you could duck low and kind of mm -hmm. scurry along low, and, and he would stick to walls, and you could kind of climb like sideways. Yeah, because Gex was a gecko. He was yeah. a lizard, and 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 he had his tongue, you know, so you you would eat flies and stuff and get power ups, and. Um, it, it was like the game Each. on the 3DO that like made me want a 3DO. Maybe not want a 3DO, but like was made me curious about a 3DO. It, it was definitely the best, I think, that unique game that the 3DO had to offer. That wasn't like some kind of a port that other things had also. Yeah. And uh, I, each board it had kind of a, a theme to it for like different. Uh, you know, kind of genres for like TV because everything was like about TV with Gex. Mm. And, uh, but yeah, it was a fun little game. Did he jump in and out of scenarios like that movie with John Ritter from Stay Tuned or whatever? Like, do you remember that? No, I don't remember that. Oh, okay. Oh, not, not important for this, I guess. <laughs> but, but you mentioned themes like, were they, uh, yeah, sets? One was like a kind of a horror theme. 
Yeah, it was kind of like a graveyard or something. Yeah. And uh, another, I don't even remember what it looked like, but I just, I remember Gex making comments about, like, this looks like from Gilligan's Island or <laughs> something. Like, you know, he gotcha. would say things like that. Gotcha. And uh, he would make fun of the, the boss. It was like this kind of TV creature guy that was named Rez or something like that. So and, it was just uh, another one of those like '90s sarcastic yeah, characters yeah. that yeah. he he would, he would make, just quipping all over the place. Yeah, he's like he would say something about the boss being like Darth Vader's younger brother or something like that. Gotcha. But it was cute. Yeah, I mean, it looked like a fun game, and you know, as you said to me, like well, you're probably thinking of like the PlayStation. It did get ported out. Like yeah. it was a strong enough IP to get. To you know, yeah, escape the they 3DO. ended up making at least two, maybe three. I remember a third one. I remember a third one. Yeah, because there was like Gex, Enter the Gecko. Yeah, and um, remember that title. Yeah, there was there was a few other games, and and these other ones I think went more three D style, which is what you might have been thinking of earlier. Yeah, because I know I played at least one of those other ones on the PlayStation at one point. Cool. Well, are we ready to get back to the Turbo Graphics yeah, 16? So, so Turbo Graphics 16, uh, what's number three? Okay, so uh, number three for me is going to be a game that I actually know that you enjoy too a lot. Uh, is uh, Ninja Spirit? Yeah, I do like Ninja Spirit. That was Ni- a good game. It's another one of those games. It was completely unique. They they made it up. You know, it wasn't a name you recognized, like Shinobi or. You know, they just Turbo Graphics couldn't afford to port. Really, they had to come up with all their own original stuff, and thankfully, a lot of them were really good. And Ninja Spirits was one of those games. It reminds me of like a really uh, deep Ninja Gaiden, like the Nintendo version, yeah. where you're like, you know, you're a ninja, and you're, you know, like there's magic, and I, it was really had a really neat upgrade system too, where you could get power ups, and you'd have like ninjas following you, like shadowing you, so. Like in a shooter, you would get more powered up as the levels went along, and the more powered up you were, you would it was easier to defeat the bosses at the mm-hmm. end. So like if you had like two or three of those like shadowing characters, you could kind of, you know, jump up and then come down, and you'd have like a ninja stacked like yeah. the whole screen, like doing ninja stars and yeah. you know with the blades. And if you if you did it right. The character that mattered, because you know your little ninjas wouldn't take damage. Only you would yeah, take damage. Yeah, the shadows. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the shadows could be in all the dangerous places doing the damage, and you kind of be like off protecting yourself. So the game was really deep in that respect. You know, there was a pretty robust, you know, weapons and upgrade system. And the, I just remember the graphics being really top notch. Uh, the music was really good. Uh, it was really tight. The game was really, you know, controlled really well. And uh, I, I know I'm not alone on this, too, because we have this thing called uh, the Louisville Arcade Expo that happens once a year, mm-hmm. you know, where you get all the arcades and you get that great nostalgic feels. But they also have those little side rooms where it's like the hall of consoles. And uh, the, anytime it seems like there's a TurboGrafx-16 on display, it's not bonk. There's Ninja Spirit. It's Ninja Spirit. So I, I guess a lot of people felt the same way that I did. I always felt like I was like playing this like best little secret, you know? Yeah. Uh, not a lot of people knew what it, the game was, but I was, you know, we, we were both into the same stuff. So I was like, you gotta check this game out. And I, I was very happy when you were agreed that it was such a great game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's one of those games where if I was gonna turn on my TurboGrafx-16, which wasn't a lot, um, I would go ahead and put that in and I would beat it because... I couldn't put that game down. Once I started the game, I had to beat it. So, you know, a lot of times, like, you you have a game where it had a few select levels that were really fun. You get what you want out of it, and then you stop. But I would play that game almost every time and beat it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's my number three, uh, Ninja Spirit. What's your number three, Nick? Well, number three for me, and it's starting to get harder and harder (laughs) with with the 3DO since, really, I only just bought it for Street Fighter. Yeah, but um, so number three is uh, getting Samurai. harder to defend now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so Samurai Showdown, uh, there was a port of that on the 3DO, but it, it was a good port though because you know at the time there was Samurai Showdown that you know was in the arcade, but and there was one on the Super Nintendo, and the Super Nintendo one, you know, there it the sprites were a lot smaller. 
Uh, in fact, uh, they didn't even have Earthquake because that, that character was just too big and oh, they, yeah. they, they couldn't get him in there. And uh, so this was a very good port that was more true to the actual arcade version of Samurai Showdown. Yeah, if you couldn't afford like $700 for a Neo Geo and like $300 for an actual cartridge yeah, or whatever those prices were, they were so exorbitant and like crazy amounts. Um, yeah, getting a, a good port for 3DO. Uh, I, I remember you being a big fan of those SNK fighter games. Me never quite as much. I appreciated some of the games. Now, Samurai Showdown is my favorite. Yeah. Of of all the you know the of all the different franchises the SAK fighting genres it, I think it's probably really the one that started it for me with the SNK games because I think you know Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting they came out before Samurai Showdown Fatal but, Fury uh, to me always felt like a cheap Fatal, version fa yeah Fatal Fury wasn't that great uh, Fatal Fury two was okay you know it was a lot better but the the very first fatal fury i mean that's kind of like you know the very first street fighter one is kind of garbage yeah um art of fighting was good uh, art of fighting was cool because you know the characters were huge it was hard though it was just really hard you you could either not even get past the first guy or you get past the first guy but the second guy's too hard you know I wish I could do a list of Neo Geo like this, but obviously none of us could, not many people could afford a Neo Geo. Yeah. But again, like Turbo Graphics, you know, if I'm going to draw comparisons to that machine, like they had to, everything they released had to be SNK, it had to be like homegrown. And they, they made the best out of that. Like they really did put out some solid franchises. Yeah, they're good games. And if you have a Nintendo Switch, it's a great, great time because, you know, they keep releasing those, you know, weekly almost Neo Geo classic games. Um, but yeah, Samurai Showdown was fun because you had weapons. Was it like the first fighting game where they really would kind of, like it wasn't hand-to-hand -hand anymore? I think it was, really. I mean, it's the first one that I know of that they were using weapons instead of just, you know, fisticuffs. Yeah, or projectiles. But, I mean, you know, like you had swords and katanas. And and everybody had, like, their own kind of unique weapon. Uh, like a Earthquake, who wasn't even in the Super Nintendo one. He had, like, the sickle and chain. Mm -hmm. uh, Ganon had, like, that huge claw. Yeah. Um, Wan Fu... Well, I was about ready to say he had that big stone pillar, but that was Samurai Showdown 2. He had he had a giant sword in Samurai Showdown 1. It's too bad they didn't do Samurai Showdown 2 for 3DO. Yeah. That would have been love right two, there. 2 was very good. 2 is, I think, my favorite of the series. But, uh, yeah, it was Samurai Showdown 1. But um, I, I would say, though, that was the best port of Samurai Showdown on the consoles at the time, you know, aside from Neo Geo, which was the same thing as the arcade. Um, that's, you know, we, we kind of give ourselves a hard time about the 3D and Turbo Graphics, but you just mentioned two really solid ports of arcade games in a time in the 90s when arcade games were king. Yeah. Um, so... Who really cares? Like, you might not have had a, the library of games, you know, mm -hmm. as our list is going to show. It's not an extensive library, uh, but you had quality at the top. Like, there was some quality up at the top yeah. where it mattered. And, uh, you know, even though Samurai Showdown wasn't really my thing, like, it did look really good. And if you could kind of, like you said, you know, like Super Nintendo just couldn't, the sprite count, they couldn't do it. If you can get those big sprites like you could in the uh, arcade, yeah. then you could be proud of that. Nice and big, scaled. Yeah. Cool. Um, should I be going on to my number four then? Yeah, so Turbo Graphics, number four. Turbo Graphics, number four. Okay, so I'm running low on, like, you know, the original titles. You're going to start seeing a couple ports from me now. Uh, Pac Land. Pac Land. I love <laughs> Pac Land. Uh, and as far as I know, it was, and like, really the only. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's, it's really the only place you could even get Pac Land. I remember looking at the back of the box or well, a magazine. There was one other. Uh, Atari Lynx. So on a handheld. On a handheld. And it looked like garbage, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. The Turbo Graphics version looked pretty nice. You know, uh, it was, again, very colorful. And I guess I imagine, uh, I, I don't know, was like Hudson and like NEC like somehow related to Namco or were they together in any way at the time? Like, I don't really know how they were able to land Pac Land. Yeah, I don't know. 
Well, I mean, there were a few Namco games. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know, like, what deals w w were made, but, yeah, because uh, yeah, I, I know that um, Galaga 88 w or... Uh, oh, you're right. Galaga 90. And yeah, uh, they called it Galaga 90. Yeah. Um, the arcade version was Galaga 88. That was on Turbo Graphics also. Yeah. And, you know, Turbo did get a few ports here and there, but um, Pac-Land was, like, a really, really close to the arcade. Like, it was a good port. And I don't remember what year Pac-Land actually came out, but I do remember playing it probably a couple years, like, it had already been out in a, like, Mr. Gaddy's or something. Yeah. And, uh, and then, like, not even a year later, seeing it out for Turbo. So, for, to me, it was like, it just came out in the arcade, and it just got yeah. ported over, and it looks pretty good. And I'm sure that's, like, one of those games, too, that, like, I was showing you, like, check out Pac-Land. That's pretty cool. And, you know, Pac-Land itself is not, like, a particularly deep game. I, I, I seem to remember the physics of the game not being real great. Yeah, well, especially when you're jumping on the trampolines. Because, uh... <laughs> It was so weird. You to jump on the trampoline. You you could high, to do the long jump and kind of float as you jump. You would have to like keep tapping, like forward on the joystick. Which and and some some arcade versions, it was a button for walk. It was like a left and a oh, right. Oh yeah, button. yeah, yeah. It wasn't even a joystick. Yeah. And uh, God, can you imagine that? Yeah. So you <laughs> you'd either have to keep like tapping right or tapping the joystick right. And if you didn't do that, like, as fast as you could, he would just drop like a rock right into the water. <laughs> yeah, the game was kind of cumbersome. and I mean, really all it had going for it was pretty graphics. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Pac-Man was past his prime at this point, but it was... It was like the cartoon version of Pac-Land in a side-scroller. You nailed it. Uh, I was going to mention how much it looked like the cartoon. Yeah. It, it really did have that style of the cartoon, which I think we all enjoyed. Um, but just... If I'm being honest, and it's in my top five, <laughs> it's, it wasn't a really great game. I like Pac-Land. But I, I played it a bunch. It was a fun game. And, you know, yeah. sometimes, like, you have games where mechanically, technically, the game's not real great, but you have good, fond memories of it. Yes. And, uh, you know, I would pull, I would swap in that little cue card every now and then and play some Pac-Land. Yeah. I mean, for, like, I, five, ten minutes at a time. I admit, it doesn't have the best controls, but, yeah. but I love it. Yeah, and, you know, it had a real lovable famous character that you loved and got you know appreciated and yeah. you know and it, there the game let's just let's admit it, it was slim pickets on the turbo anyway so if you can get a pac-man game on the turbo you might as well go, ahead and go for it so yep that's my number uh four nick what's your number four for the 3do okay number four for the 3do okay now you you know i'm running out of games to pick from when my number four pick is a basketball game a sports game <laughs> so, <laughs> so oh my god <laughs> number four for the 3do i'm gonna say slam and jam 95 oh man okay i don't know if I'm familiar with that game and, but yeah and i'm a really I'm gonna say probably Look, the only. Can we just we... like go back and say that Nick has picked a sports game for <laughs> his top five? I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, you got me started kind of playing NBA Jam. Okay. And that was fun. Yeah. And oh. and I bought NBA Jam like on the Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. It was a really uh, fun game. So this was the time I think when I was playing NBA Jam, and so I thought, well. And it was probably on sale, I'm sure, or something. I'm probably, like, in Babbage's. What was the game called again? It. Slam and Jam 95. 95, okay. <laughs> so, you know, so I'm probably looking at the 3DO section, you know, thinking, like, well, I've got my Street Fighter, i got Gex, got Samurai Showdown. <laughs> what else? <Yeah. laughs> oh, so, oh so, you know, I picked it up, but it, it was a fun little game. Yeah. I, and it... it it didn't run left and right like NBA Jam does. It's it was kind of more. It was like vertical, like you would go okay. like towards the goal. Okay. Um, but it was. And so it was an arcadey style, not like some basketball simulation. Yeah. Kind what, of a. What's what's that? A uh, uh, run and gun? Is that? A, yeah, run and gun was an arcade game that was awesome. I actually. think it's similar to that. Okay. Okay. So kind of like. Uh, Again, not simulated, but a lot of like alley ooping and dunking, and you yeah, know, quick, so. easy scoring. I didn't really play it a whole lot, but you know, it, it was a fun little game. 
Well, I think Run and Gun had like an alley button even. So yeah. like, they wanted you to alley. If you played it in 95, I think you would have liked it. Mm -hmm. If you play it now, maybe not. I mean, I must have like played it with you at some point. Because I mean, like, you know, like, hey, I got this new 3DO system. Hey, I got this basketball game. Like, I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, I really don't ever remember even showing it to you. I don't know. <laughs> Were you ashamed of your purchase? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Probably. So, I don't know. I think we're just playing other so, things. Slam and just, jam. I just. I don't think it even came up really. You know. I imagine it didn't even have real sports teams too. It probably had like made up. You no. Know, yeah, Las Vegas. No. You know I tornadoes. Know. I'd be kind of curious to look now though. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, when I'm putting this pa the video together later, I'm sure I'll probably go look for some. If I could find some, yeah, find some footage and throw it up yeah. on there and see, you know, if, if it's something I remember or not. <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm all kidding aside. It I'm sure it was probably a fun game. Yeah. Especially if it was uh, like that run and gun type game, which I actually did play in arcades and thought it was quite fun and. You're right. Around those like early to mid '90s, NBA Jam was like so popular. So you know, if you could get a kind of version of that on your 3DO, might as well get it. So, number uh, what are we at five? Number five for me. For Turbo Graphics 16. Yeah, and uh, I'll, I'm gonna do a little shout out thing, like I like to do sometimes here, right around fifth pick. Um, I, I'm gonna pick a game that was really fun for me in the arcades. This fifth pick, you know. What I when I reveal it, it's mostly for the arcade memory of the arcade. So I at least want to give a couple shout outs to true Turbo Graphics sixteen games. Uh, Bomberman ninety four was like a really good oh, yeah. solid Bomberman game that a lot of people would put on their number one for Turbo Graphics sixteen. Yeah. Um, fun game Splatterhouse, uh, which was like well, and now Splatterhouse that was Namco too, right? I I don't think so. No? Which is why, like, when we were doing that Let's Play, or Bicky Plays video for uh, the Namco Museum game, we were talking about how, like, odd it was that Splatterhouse kind of showed up. And I could be wrong, uh, and if I'm wrong, I'll put something on the screen, but I don't think it was Namco. Yeah, well, I, I almost want to say it was, like, some, like, well, other... it's on the Namco Museum, it's got to be Namco. I know, but... I know, I'm, and I'm, pr I'm sure I'm wrong, but... Because I mean, they've already got the Pac-Land... Galaga, so yeah. Splatterhouse. Like, Could be. Namco, you know, they, just, they had their game. I guess fun. it was a Namco game that I never, ever realized was a Namco game. Yeah. Because it was, like, such a gory game. You know, it was basically, like, Jason from yeah. Friday the 13th walking around with, like, a cleaver. I guess like most a... Namco things are kind of cutesy. Uh-huh. And, you know, I don't know. It, it wasn't something they were like, from the creators of Pac-Man is Splatterhouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Murder your enemies in hell, you know, like instead of like little friendly yeah. ghosts running around, like um, trying something new. Yeah, but it was it was a, a neat game. It was real big sprites, big characters filled up the whole screen. I do remember trying that a little bit. Yeah, and it's you know it's a game now where you're like, eh. yeah, <laughs> it's totally just for nostalgia reasons, and you're not gonna pick it up and play it to the end. Um, and, uh, let's see, what other games can I think of? Uh, Legendary Axe was kind of a good game. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know what, those are my shout outs. Do you have any shout outs for 3DO that you'd like to mention? Uh, well, not, not so much shout outs as far as like a dishonorable mention. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, cause I, like when you, I, I, you're talking about 3DO, you immediately think of Way of the Warrior. <laughs> And that is the most awful game. Yeah. It's, it's their answer to Mortal Kombat. They tried to make their own Mortal Kombat. They got the digitized actors. I think I made a but, joke about Way of the Warrior in our Sega Genesis. Yeah, I think we've already <laughs> kind of talked about it. But yeah, it's it's awful. It's uh, I, I ended up, I got it, not, there was like some kind of a bundle pack that I got it with. And uh, so I ended up trying it out because of this bundle that I got, like, about four or five games for, like, whatever price. Morbid curiosity. Yeah. yeah. It, I'll admit, though, Way of the Warrior being in that bundle was pretty much the reason I got the bundle. Like, well, mm. let's check it out. Let's let's see if my suspicions were correct. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah it's, it's not good. It reminds me of that arcade, that really rare, unreleased arcade game that we saw. Oh, the Tattoo Assassins? <laughs> yes. Is it, it like that? It's a lot like that. Oh, my yeah. God. So it's it's fun but, to play for its awfulness. But with worse awfulness. controls. Oh, God. Jesus. 
Yeah, the. I mean, it, it looks fine. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it, if you look at it still, it looks kind of neat, sure. sort of. It can't be that bad, right? But, yeah, the controls it, are terrible. It can't be that bad. <laughs> but, because yeah. like, if a game plays like crap, what's the point? And then another one is, um, what's it called? P.O.'d. It's like <laughs> Doom and Wolfenstein. It's like those games. Yeah. But it, there's like walking around like butts. It's the <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. <laughs> it's just like butts with legs. So it's like if the main character from Wolfenstein was like tripping on LSD. <laughs> and I think you got like a frying pan and you're just hitting like these butts with a oh, frying Oh, it's like your main pan. weapon is a frying pan? <laughs> well, I, I'm sure there are others. I, that one I've never actually even played. Oh, okay. I, I played, well, there was a demo of it and I, I played the demo a little bit and I was just like, what is going on with this game? I mean, now that you mention it, I, I think I remember seeing like an ad or something in a magazine. Yeah. Or no, you know, I might have even been working at, uh, I think I was working at Babbage's towards the, like the 3DO was at the tail end of its life, if I want, I want to say, and that might have been a game I saw. That that was a game I think that anytime you're talking about 3DO, that there's like a picture of that game. <laughs> like, remember this piece? I of crap. I think people acted like it was the coolest thing because it's like it's edgy, you know, or whatever. Uh, it worked for Sega. I mean, sometimes like you just try and sell like a, an attitude or an image. Yeah. But, I mean, the game's still got to be kind of fun to play. I, I think that was the entire draw for it is because it's like, you know, Doom's popular, so let's do that. It looked kind of like Doom. But, yeah, it, it does. It looks a lot like Doom. But instead of, like, Nazis, you got, butt. you know, walking assholes. Well, the Nazis is Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, you're right. My bad. Sorry. But, yeah, they all look the same. Um, Doom is demons. What about balls? <laughs> balls, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that fighting game that yeah. like every character is like made up of like balls like stitched together, like Vector that, Man, that it, Sega Genesis game, but fighting style. You know, and I, I want to be at like the round table where they come up with like the concepts for these games because I feel like they just started with a name and then went from there. <laughs> Can we just make a game called Balls? <laughs> 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 sure, yeah, that's great. You're hired. Uh, great job. Let's get it up to yeah. development pronto. <laughs> You know, and uh, I played Balls on Super Nintendo, <laughs> and it was on 3DO, but I don't think I ever yeah. played the 3DO version. It, it was a thing that when a lot of, you know, companies were trying to, of course, you know, ape the success of whatever they could. Yeah, I mean, they, everybody had <clears> to make their own fighting game, and, you know, I mean, it was... Balls might have been on PlayStation also. It, uh, it seems fine. like. <laughs> it I mean, you know, so it was bad. it was like Clay Fighter, but with Balls. <laughs> Is that the pitch? <laughs> I got a great idea. We're going to make millions. We're going to retire off balls. <laughs> I just wanted to say balls. I'll be honest <laughs> when I mention it. But, you know, it is like I remember seeing the box for that. Just, uh, you know. All right. But so, okay, back to my number five. Um, Chase HQ, which is a game that I remember actually playing in a Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, we were talking about, you know, eight that. things from the 80s. Um, yeah, Chase HQ was this really cool game where you were like a cop, and uh, the whole game was you're driving along and crooks were, I guess, getting away from a crime, and you had to like navigate and dodge through traffic and ram into the uh, bad guys. Yeah. And you had a time limit, and you had to ram into them enough times to where they would eventually like pull over. And of course, it got harder as it went along, and the traffic scenarios would be more, you know, there'd be more jams. Um, it, it kind of reminds me too of like, have you ever played that Batman game that it's out in arcades now where you can choose the different like era Batman, like Batmobiles? Oh, no. I've seen it once, but no, I haven't It kind of reminds me like that. Like you're kind of chasing after an enemy and you get to him eventually. Um, but Chase HQ was, it, it did come out for a Turbo Graphics 16 and I was always a sucker for like an arcade port. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was actually pretty good. You know, and it wasn't just Turbo Graphics. I think there was like a Sega Genesis version of it, and you know, it got ported to like other things too, like Game Boy, which I never played, but can't imagine it being any Chase good. Chase HQ's on Game Boy. Yeah, can you imagine that? <laughs> what was that game? <laughs> uh, a lot of times that you see a game and you're excited that it's released for the console that you have, but you can't see past the excitement of the game. You start to think about the logistics of the game. Like, oh God, what's this game actually going to be like? Is it going to be Dragon's Lair for the NES? Right. <laughs> um, but, you know, for, for the Turbo Graphics, it, it handled those 
you know, that, that effect, the driving, you know, like there was another game too. I think it was called like Victory Run. It was another one of those outrun style games. Yeah. It was not a great game, but, but Chase HQ was a fun game. Uh, and it was a Taito game, I think, yeah. which Taito, 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 I'm not sure. I was I, I, Taito, I think. Yeah. T- Taito was like one of those like, you know, really reputable arcade guys like Dating Space East. Invaders. You're right. They did do Space yeah. Invaders. Good one. Yeah, they could do a compilation disc. I would buy Space Invaders and Chase HQ for yeah. sure. So, anyways, that's that's wrapping up my Terrible Graphics 16 list. Uh, what are you gonna bring home for the 3DO? Uh, 3DO. Well, so I was already running out, and so I did a sports game last time. <laughs> so this one that I'm gonna pick, I I really only played it on the demo. <laughs> So, you didn't even buy the full I didn't game. even have this game, but I enjoyed it on the oh, demo. Sure, I, it was fun. Mm-hmm. But and, and that's why I list it after the sports game is because it was just I did at least own that one. Gotcha. But uh, Return Fire, that was a fun little. It was it was like a, a top down view, and I don't I don't really know what the goal was other than just blow up whatever. You know, I was just like shooting at everything. I right. But yeah, you, and I don't really remember a whole lot. Like if you could drive, I think you were like in a tank or something. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, and you shoot your missiles and whatever and just, you know, well, just, you know, top down view, shoot things kind of a thing. But it was fun. It's funny. EA actually had some pretty good games to come out on the Genesis and like other systems too. Like the one was called like Desert Strike. Where it was like top down like that, but you were in a helicopter. So, you know, it, it's odd that a game like that didn't get ported over. Maybe it would have if it had survived long enough. Yeah, I don't know. So, Return Fire, just a uh, fun yeah, little demo. I, I don't, yeah, I don't really know what else to really say about it because I've only played the demo. So. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're not seeing like what we're talking about here, the, this is the top 10, of, you know, games of failed systems. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'll I'll sheepishly defend my Turbo Graphics 16 and I still have my 3DO. I still have my Turbo Graphics 16. Yeah, I can't play it because like you got to have a certain type of television I think to play it on. Um, you uh, know, yeah. but uh, I, I need to get like an old like CRT TV or something to just, hook up into the coax. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe there's an adapter, but there's always emulators and stuff like that, so there's really no point. Um. But, you know, like I had said earlier, you know, our top three are both really solid top threes, I think. Um, and I'm not I'm not upset that I got a TurboGrafx-16 at all. I'm not. I mean, I enjoyed Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. <laughs> you got, would you say you got your money's worth? With Gex, too. I mean, I, you know, you, you could be proud of Gex. And, you know, a good port of Samurai Shodan. Uh, what was it, 3DO? It was expensive, too, wasn't it? Like $400 or something? I, I want to say the one when I got it, the model I got, I think, was 300 I want to say. <sighs> yeah. I, I want to say that Turbo Graphics was, like, in the 100s, like, you know, 189 or something. Like, I don't know. It, it was pricey. Yeah, and it, it's... I shouldn't have bought it when I did. You know, it's like one of those things. <laughs> no, no, I, I understand. I mean, if you... Um, I didn't get a Sega CD for Dragon's Lair, but if that's what was out at the time, and I knew the only way I could play it was, you know, to get a Sega CD, yeah. I would have bought it. You know, and there was Dragon's Lair on the 3DO. Um, I don't think I ever played the 3DO version, though. I huh. must have had it by some other means and so didn't care about it pc on maybe yeah i must have had a good version of it somewhere else yeah. or else i would have snatched it up for sure yeah that's good enough reason for me because everybody knows i'm gay for dragons later mm. i love it <laughs> dirk the daring baby all right so that's been our list of top 10 games from failed systems i did the turbo graphics 16 and i did 3do thanks for watching big geek see ya